This is an article from today.yougov um, on what college graduates say about college, in particular when it comes to did they walk away more liberal, did they walk away more conservative, or did they believe that their college experience did not really engage their you know, political perspectives. And what I will definitely say that may not be explicitly said in this article is if a college or an influence in your life, if an institution, an organization, whatever it is, something that you're investing in, that though these are the voices of authority in your head, if they are influencing your political opinions, they are absolutely influencing your worldview. Because your politics, your your belief around how the country that you live in should run, what you're basing that off of, right? Most of us would assume, but it's not an assumption to make anymore. Most of us would assume that, hey, if you live in the United States, then you respect and value the you know, original tenets of the founding fathers. You value the Constitution of the United States of America. You value the independence, uh, the Declaration of Independence. You value these things that the founding fathers wrote uh, as the core structure of our country. You value the, the U.S. Congress and the U.S. Senate. You value the structures. You respect the structures that are built into our country. But that's not an assumption that we can make anymore because there are so many people that are in the United States that live here, that engage in the economy, that you know, use resources that live in homes that are our neighbors that don't value our country, that don't agree with the core structure, the core tenets of our country, that believe lots of things that cancel out their respect or their admiration for the founding fathers. And so therefore, they're walking around in the world and they're saying, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And I'm here to like, I'm here to take you out. I'm here to, you know, essentially I'm here to sabotage your country because I don't agree with it, but I'm also going to live here and engage and, you know, take from your country and from your economy. Mind blowing to me. It's not an assumption that we can make anymore, but colleges in particular are breeding ground for liberal agendas being infiltrated into every aspect of the classroom, of the apprenticeships, of the engagement, of what's allowed on campus, what's not allowed on campus, the real control of free speech, question mark. I say free speech, question mark, because I'm not really sure that there are a lot of actual free speech spaces in college and in, in liberal colleges now, nowadays, which are a lot of colleges. Um, but this article is a very interesting article because it breaks down um, a, a poll they pulled. I'm going to read this to you. You can read it on the screen. Again, these are also linked in the description down below. I always want to make sure that you guys have the original sources for this information. Some of you may walk away and say, that's not, that's no. And you have the right to say that because I want to give you the sources and you decide for yourself that this is relevant information. I try to do my best to vet what I'm using. And at the end of the day, there's going to be some times where I mess up. But we're going to talk about this. Most college graduates say college makes people more liberal. This was written in 2022. A recent YouGov poll asked more than 22,000 Americans their opinions on how a college education affects a person's political ideology. Again, your political ideology highly, highly influences your worldview because your political ideology definitely flows from what you believe about the world, your place in the world, other people and their relationship to you and their relationship to each other. All of these things come from your core worldview about what you believe about those things and your politics is going to flow from that. So do not assume that it's just politics, but this is literally worldview change. Okay. So 22,000 Americans on their opinions on if the college experience impacted their personal political ideology. Nearly half of Americans, 47%, including 56% of college graduates, say that going to college generally makes people more liberal. Huh. Huh. Now, you're not going to you're not going to hear this from the college teachers. You're not going to hear this from the main stakeholders in the colleges. You're not going to hear this from the people at the federal level funding these colleges. You're not going to hear this from them, but you are hearing this thank the Lord, you're hearing this from the actual people who have graduated from these institutions. You're hearing from people who are, and you know, what's interesting is the title says 
most college graduates say college makes people more liberal. I don't necessarily see that these are graduates. These, these may be people that are still in college. It doesn't make that explicitly clear in the content itself. But these are definitely people who are at college or have been at college saying, hey, it makes you, it makes you more liberal. So nearly half of Americans, 47%, including 56% of college graduates, say that going to college generally makes people more liberal, while only 6% say it makes them more conservative. Now, what's laughable about that number is that number is probably highly influenced in the fact that that 6% likely went to a conservative and actually conservative college. There are lots of conservative colleges that are not actually conservative. They're like wolves in sheep's clothing. It's like, you might as well just tell yourself, tell everybody that you're liberal and just call it good because the sneaking around and having different opinions and not actually communicating them is kind of lame. Just say 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 what you are, right? Uh, well, only 6% say it makes them more conservative. About one in five say college has no effect on ideology, that 22%. That must have been the 22% that was sleeping in the back and didn't really care and was disconnected and apathetic to the college experience and probably didn't apply themselves. So we'll just say that about those 22%. People who are themselves very conservative or conservative are more likely to say that going to college makes a person very liberal than people who identify as liberal are to say this. Now, this is what's really fascinating. And you can look through this whole article. I want you to go and actually do the research. Go look at this. Go Google different stats. Go do your research. If this is something that really interests you, you care about your own college experience or your kid's college experience. And when I say experience, I don't even mean about like how many friends they made. I mean about are they applying themselves? Are we applying ourselves in college in a way that actually gets to the objective that we went there for? I can't tell you. And you may be one of those people. I can't, I can't tell you how many people I talked to who said, yeah, my original verbiage around why I was going to college, yeah, it wasn't actually true. I was there for the parties. I was there for the experience. I was there for the people. I was there for all of that. And I mean, okay, but be honest about it. Like if that's why you're at college, fine. You're paying a pretty penny for networking. You're paying a pretty penny for having fun with friends and partying. Those are some pretty expensive parties. But whatever, if that's if that's what you're up to, fine, just call it for what it is. But what's so incredible is it's, you know, especially in these very famous, I love how Dave Ramsey says it, in these very, very famous colleges, you know, we, we like to call them prestigious, but it's, it's really more famous. They're well known, which is why they can charge more and be more selective about who they bring in. Um, but these famous colleges, you know, they're, they're charging you insane amounts. You're going into debt, all of these things. And you are likely going to walk away, not, not just, there's a difference between your worldview being challenged, challenged in a way that builds resilience, challenged in a way that actually tests what you believe from an ideology perspective to a practical, how do I live? How do I function in the world? How do I respond? How do I respond when I'm, you know, out of water as a fish, right? Like, how would they know they're in water? How would they know if they're out of water? How do I actually experience my ideology in a practical way in the world is what I'm saying, what I'm actually being and what I'm actually doing. And these are huge, huge factors for young adults because oftentimes we're not being tested in these arenas. And so we have these belief systems. We have these worldviews that we're just adopting because our parents believed it and our grandparents believed it instead of actually having it for ourselves and knowing why and living it. And so then we go to college in these liberal areas and these liberal environments and the objective is not to challenge our ideologies or challenge our worldviews. The objective is to change them. The objective is to change them. And this is why if you're a parent watching this, I want you to hear this in love. My, my parents, I love my parents. My parents are incredible. And they, we've had so many conversations about it. They've learned over the years and truly been students of their own choices, their own parenting. I've seen them change and grow and refine and get closer in their faith. And, and also this sense of like humility and grace around, wow, like we didn't think that was going to be a problem and it's a problem. We didn't see that and that's what's happening. So for those of you who are parents, I'm speaking to you. I'm pleading with you as a young adult, as someone who may be your kid's age, as someone who may be a little bit older than your kid's age. Please do not put on the blinders 
around politics, around social issues, around the liberal, liberal agendas that are creeping into their high school experience, their middle school experience, even their preschool and elementary experiences. Y'all, it's everywhere. Please do not put a blind, a blindfold on to what they're going to be up against in their peer groups, in their jobs, even at their en- entry-level Starbucks jobs. Y'all, it's everywhere. Let alone their college experience, especially if they're on campus. Oh my goodness, they're away from you. They're being tested, but they're being tested in an environment that doesn't want to challenge them from a place of growth. It wants to change what they think and what they believe and why. It will change their behavior. It will change their their worldview. It will change what they believe, what they think about themselves, what they think about the world. And if you don't understand that before you're sending your kids off to school, if they don't understand that before they're sending themselves off to school, y'all, it's going to be rough because every semester, every summer when they come back home, if they come back home, they're going to be dramatically a different person every time. And again, this is not like growth is different than infiltration and deceptive changing of worldview. Those are very different things, right? I want to be an environment. I want to be in environments where other people have different perspectives, where other people have different belief systems. I want to be in environments where there is good faith around the conversations we're having, the debates we're having, the differences of opinions that we're having, but there is a respect of you believe what you believe, I believe what I believe, and we're going to talk that out and we're going to refine it and we're going to be open, but we still have a position that we're holding. We still have a worldview, a belief system that we are holding in the context of how we're engaging with each other. There's a level of respect. Now, if you look in the political landscape, y'all, like there's not that level of respect often. And this ends up in like cat fights, <laughs> literal cat fights on the debate stage. And, you know, all of the he said, she said name calling that happens on social media between politicians. It's really sad. I love politics. I'm excited to go into a political career and to engage in civil service. And at the end of the day, the thing that frustrates me the most about this field is the name calling, the nitpicking, all of the interrupting. We're not actually hearing people's policies. We're not actually hearing positions on what what am I offering the American people as your president or as your senator or as your congressman or as your congresswoman, like whatever, right? We're not necessarily hearing those positions. We're hearing a lot of name calling. And he said this and she said that and she did this in high school and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, y'all, what is your policy? What is your position? What are you actually offering the American people? If you sit down with any business who wants to offer you something, you're going to say, hey, What's the return on investment? What's in it for me? What is in it for me, right? You're going to ask, like, what are you offering me that I perceive as value? And this is one of the hard, hard things that I've learned in being in business, which is if you're offering something that people don't want, they won't buy it. They won't buy it. And so this begs to question, then we we question, wait a minute, if politics is all about name calling and he said this and she said that and politics is, you know, we see it in in our very hectic uh, year of debating and the presidential elections and the, and the, you know, the statewide elections that are happening now as well. We see this happening a lot, which is like, we don't hear people's positions. We don't hear people's policies. We hear how loud somebody can name call the other person, how loud somebody can call the other person weird or creepy or whatever, instead of actually hearing people, what people are offering the American people. So we have to ask ourselves, well, if people are watching this, if people are engaging with this, if people are like playing the same game back, then what is that communicating to us around what people are used to wanting, what people are used to being served, and what people are just saying, sure, okay, well, this is just how it is. This is just what it is. 